Proverbs 12:22. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are His delight. Lying is a sin many of us continue to struggle with in our everyday life. It is one of those sins that we slip into easily, even without knowing it. The problem with the sin of lying is that it is so accessible to commit the sin. I mean, you don't even need to leave the comfort of your own home to lie. Oftentimes, we lie our way out of a situation because we can't face the consequences of telling the truth. Other times, we just find it as the only way to run away from our biggest fears. Whichever way it is, what is sure is that lies never bring lasting positive effects or happiness. As a matter of fact, it takes a whole lot more lies to cover up for the last lie told. So, why do we continue to deceive and continue to bear the oppressive weight of lying? The Bible's stance on lying is clear. No matter how we try to rebrand or justify lies, it will never justify how God feels about the situation. Even if everything else changes, the foundation of God remains solid and firm. Even when we find ourselves in a compromising situation where we are expected to lie our way out and save the day, God still expects us to speak the truth and stand out for Him. Lying isn't a trait that is inherent in a child of God. We as children of God are not filled with the spirit of lies. We are filled with the spirit of truth. John 16, 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. And you and I need to live our lives in a way in which that reflects that we are filled with the Holy Spirit of truth. If you find it easy to lie, and if you find lying to be second nature to you, you have a problem. People don't like to hear this statement. But there are things that God hates, and one of those things is lying. Proverbs 6, 16 through to 19. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. It probably wasn't a coincidence that lies appeared twice out of the seven things mentioned about what God hates. As believers, we should always be weary about what comes out of our mouths and distance ourselves from situations and people that put us in compromising and complicated circumstances. John 8, 44. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Lying is the devil's native language. We, as children of God, should not in any way or form be associated with the father of darkness. How can one ensure that they don't speak the devil's native language? The first thing to understand is that lying is an inherent nature of man. Nobody teaches babies how to lie before they start telling lies. It is just an innate thing they exhibit. You don't take children into how to lie class one-on-one. -on -one. They just walk out with the ability to lie. You can't overcome lying by just making a decision to stop it. You will struggle. You have to seek the help of God first. Ask Him to strengthen you and help you overcome the urge to always mislead and deceive people with the words of your mouth and actions. When you have the Spirit of God in you, it helps you live above bodily weakness and helps you do the will of the Father. Ask Him to pour His Spirit on you. If you walk in the Spirit, you won't gratify the desires of the flesh. Galatians 5, 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh wants to lie. It is in its nature, and as long as you live by this fleshy body, you will have to overcome the flesh. The second thing to do is to talk less. You might be wondering how this can help a lying tongue, but the truth is, the less you say, the better. Sometimes, we tend to lie because we want to say much to impress. We want to give non-existent illustrations and examples so that we would flow. There is a reason God gave us two ears and one mouth. It is for us to be able to listen more and say less. 
Proverbs 10, 19. In the multitude of words, there warranteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. For many people, the more they talk, the more they will sin. A simple but effective way of ensuring you don't speak the devil's native language is simply be quiet. There is much more potential to sin in talking than in listening. You don't have to run your mouth all the time. I believe a lot of people lie simply by exaggerating the truth. I used to lie and just call it exaggerate when all it was was a straight up lie. The third point is to propose in your heart to stand for the truth, even if it means standing alone. Propose in your heart to do the right thing, even if it comes at a costly price. Because everyone is doing it, including the brethren from your local assembly, still doesn't change what God says about it. It is a pity we now live in a world where we play with and get excited about sin. So many have come to trivialize and normalize sin that it doesn't even look like sin to them anymore. But as a child of God, come out from among them. Tell the truth when your voice shakes and your feet tremble. This is what distinguishes a true child of God and the child of the devil. The devil, being the father of all lies himself, delights in lying, and this is one of the traits his children are known for. Read the Word of God and continue to strive for a deeper connection with God. The more immersed you are in the knowledge of God's Word, the more difficult it will be for you to do things that are contrary to His will. You will just see these things melt away naturally from your life. Beyond your human weaknesses and limitations, you will see God stepping in and helping you overcome. Is it possible to live without telling a lie? Yes, it is. Can you do it on your own? Of course not. But the grace of God is always sufficient, even unto them that wait on Him. Lastly, whenever you are faced with the easy option of telling a lie, even offered a sum to bear false witness against another person, you should pause and ask yourself the question, what would Jesus do? What would I have done if he were standing in front of me? Once you can answer this question satisfactorily, then saying the truth becomes easier going forward. It matters whether you lie or not. It matters. If he tells us not to lie, then it's because he doesn't want us to lie. Moreover, thou shalt not lie is one of the Ten Commandments. If we choose to ignore this commandment and do what is convenient, then we are not fully his. We are of the devil because lying is the devil's famous trait. John 8, 44. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of all lies.